So, in this uh, lecture we're going to look at Wheatstone Bridges, what they are, when we use them, and what they do. So the Wheatstone Bridge is actually really cool. It's, I'm going to consider this the first standalone actual circuit that we have that uh, is very useful for a lot of things. So, Wheatstone Bridges are generally used as a way of increasing the resolution on a measurement. So, for a temperature sensor or any kind of sensor that is a resistance-based sensor. This works really well in order to get a more accurate answer. And so, Wheatstone Bridges. We're going to step back a second here and we're going to go to uh, a, a mechanical analog to this, then we're going to flip it to the electrical. So for the mechanical analog here, we're going to have, let's just say you're trying to increase uh, or get the, um, the measurement of how much a, a, a sphere weighs. So what we do in mechanical world is you plop a nice little scale down. We have a scale here, and then we're gonna put our sphere over on this. And what do we do to get this sphere value? Well, we start stacking up weights of known value on the other side. So we're gonna put a weight here, a weight here, a weight here, and these are each gonna be one, let's just pretend. And so we know because um, we have three weights on this side, and the distance A is the same as the distance B, that these three weights equal the sphere. So we know what all of these are, and we're able to take uh, this entire measurement from this side to be able to determine what the side is. And we know that they're equal because A equals B. A equals B equal equilib. Equilib. So, this is the mechanical analog of what we're trying to do with the Wheatstone. We're trying to find the, the resistance or weight of this one by using known weights over here. So, if we draw the Wheatstone bridge out, we're going to get a circuit that looks like... This is the traditional way of drawing it. And again, you can have more planar circuit, you can have something that looks a little different without the diagonals. All right, and then we're gonna have this go over here, this go over here, and this go over here, and this go over here. So what the Wheatstone is gonna do is let us find a resistance. So if we don't know the resistance of a sensor, or maybe that resistance uh, changes or whatnot, we're gonna try to find out what that resistor is. And this resistor down here, we're gonna have a fixed value, and this resistor, we're gonna have a fixed value. This resistor, we're gonna have a changeable value that we know. So essentially that's how we change the amount of weights on this scale, is we can change it. And that's usually with a potentiometer, and we can turn it to whatever a known resistance we have, so maybe 10. And then the part that gets interesting is we need the piece that keeps it equal. So what that is usually is, so this is where you put your ammeter. So that should be a little more diagonal. There we go. This is an ammeter to be able to measure how much current goes through. So the interesting part of this is whenever we have an equal system, whenever we have an equal uh, amount of resistance, what happens is there is no current that flows through this ammeter. So the ammeter, again, we're going to take two, we can take two wires or we can pull the ammeter out over here. And that's going to tell us how much current is going through, one milliamp or two milliamps. When this equals zero milliamps, that means this system is in equilibrium. And interestingly, once the system's in equilibrium, we know the value of this resistor, we know the value of this resistor, we know the value of this resistor, and we know there's no current flowing through this wire. Therefore, we can solve whatever that is. We also need to know whatever the voltage is over here. I forgot that part. But once we have all of these other pieces, we can solve for what that resistance is. And this is gonna give us a very, very accurate way of judging resistance. So let's just look real fast. Let's say we have a temperature sensor that acts like this. This is a nonlinear graph, okay? What we've got over here, let's do this one. This is what we're doing with Ohm's Law. We're linearizing it. So for a very, very small piece of this, a linearization probably is okay. But if we're looking at a very large piece of this, you can see that 
there's a huge amount of difference here. So the linearization that we use from Ohm's law doesn't always work. So we can't always just do uh, a very simple voltage divider circuit. So let me draw this one out too. So let's just say we have a, we're gonna have this one as a question and this one as an R and we have a voltmeter over here and we're gonna put a voltmeter, a voltmeter right in there. So if we can measure, let's just say this is 10 volts. If we can measure what the voltage coming over this piece is, we can back solve to find this voltage. However, this again is a linear approximation. So what this does is this allows us to finely tune because essentially we have a voltage divider here and a voltage divider here. And if we know no current is going through, we're able to back off for this one with a higher accuracy than if we were to do other ways. So this, I just wanted to give you a really brief, like conceptual introduction of what we're doing. And then I'm gonna go through the mathematics of it and a couple of really cool examples that we have coming up. However, um, for now, just remember that what we're trying to do is essentially we're building a scale system and we're trying to be able to determine one of the resistances. We're trying to determine the weight the analog of weight on this side of the scale. And so we've built this huge scale. And another thing I just wanna point out real fast is it doesn't, again, always have to look like this. We can have some linearizations come up from this and have it look like something like this. Sometimes there's a resistor between the ammeter just trying to make this look as weird as possible. Do you see how this is the same circuit essentially? We've just made it orthogonal or linear. So same kind of deal. Sometimes there's a resistor in front of the ammeter. It depends on, on uh, how we're solving this. However, uh, I think that's good enough for now. We're going to get into some more specifics in the lecture.